I am now joined with Tony Harrop, who is one of the founders and the director for GMEX Group. So we're now going to discuss a bit more about BBOD and how GMEX is providing the matching engine for BBOD. So we're going to discuss a bit more about the technology and why it might be the fastest and most reliable and stable in the cryptocurrency industry for BBOD. So could you explain to us a bit more about the matching engine technology which you're providing for BBOD? Sure. So if I start at the beginning, obviously our background has been from uh, running this matching engine in the regulated markets world, mm -hmm. where there's been a lot of attention and um, cause for concern over making sure that the system is extremely reliable. Mm -hmm. um, when we produced our initial system, we were lucky that we managed to create it from scratch, so we didn't have any legacy technology that we had to pick up and incorporate into our design. Um, obviously, because we were doing it from scratch, everyone was much more keener to take a, a close look at how did we achieve things like speed and performance mm -hmm. and reliability. Where we came from a regulated background, the regulators also look, because of course they are extremely interested in making sure that the markets stay up and run all the time. So we went through quite a tough process in the early years, but that's all fed into our core product. Mm -hmm. and one of the reasons BBOD chose us was because of that pedigree of the system. When we first designed it, one of the key requirements out at the time was to be the fastest and mm. lowest latency platform you could find. And one of the decisions that we made earlier on was to use the best technology that fitted the job. Mm. At the time, a lot of people did things in C++, but we decided to go down the Java open source route. Reasons being that the costs ultimately are a lot less. It's a lot easier to find resources to work on the systems. And there are a lot of good tools out there on the market that you can leverage if you go down that route. Mm. Of course, proving that you can then write high performance code in Java, everyone said, no, you can't do that. That's why you need to do it in C++. So we had to prove a lot of our predicts wrong. You mm. can write good quality code and you can write high performance code in Java mm. as long as you do it carefully. There are a lot of good techniques that you have to adhere to to make sure you avoid things like jitter, garbage collection, these are all the technical issues that slow the systems down mm. or make it um, unpredictable in terms of your response. And the last thing you want if you're a market maker sending an order in is that you have to wait so many milliseconds to get a response back. Mm. You know, they want it back in microseconds. Mm. That's as fast as this system will go. Yeah. So when we first launched it, we were probably, I think, the fastest on the market. Mm. And we've obviously built a lot of new functionality into the platform since. That BBOD are also taken advantage of. One of the key technology uh, innovations that we put in place is the way that we manage things in memory. We use a very sophisticated journal mechanism that avoids all of the delays that other systems have. We don't have any database writes, we don't write anything to disk that causes uh, a delay on the system. We use discrete services that are event driven to make sure that all the communication is happening in real time. And all of that leads to us having a system where we measure performance in terms of hundreds of thousands of messages per second mm. coming through our matching engine. All of those obviously trigger responses that then have to get fed out. So there's a lot of messaging flowing over the system across mm. the network. With BBOD in particular, one of the things that they were very keen on was to have good um, risk management. And traditionally, that's often been done after the trading has taken place. Mm. It's done by the back end systems when things come to clear and settle. But of course, often that's too late. It's after the events happened and then to unwind a position, mm. particularly if you've missed millions of messages in between, it becomes a nightmare. Mm. So what we did for them was to move a lot of that complexity and that maths and the calculation from the back end of the process to up front as part of the pre-trade checking. Mm. So what we're doing, every time a new order comes in or there's a new price update from the market, we look at everyone's positions, we look at their summary, what they've got overall, but also the individual instrument holdings, mm. and we recalculate their exposure based on the current market pricing. Having done that, if they're within their margin thresholds, well and good, we carry on and we look at everyone else's. And we'll do that continually. 
But of course, occasionally they start to get close to that threshold. It means we need to do something about it because the platform wants to run without risk. We want to make sure that trades will always settle and that people aren't abusing the market. Mm -hmm. So if somebody does exceed their threshold, what we'll do is step in, the system will actually take over their position and start to liquidate their position automatically. And by liquidate, it means closing off and reducing their exposure mm -hmm. by fairly placing orders onto the market making sure that those positions reduce until they're below that threshold. And that's okay. one of the specific changes that we built in for BPOD. Okay, that will be really good for our clients to have that understanding of when they use our exchange, it's going to be really reliable and risk-free. So many other cryptocurrency exchanges like um, BitMEX and Deribit have recently reported that there's been a performance issue with um, the capacity of their matching engine because of the increase of traffic. So how will you be sort of ensuring that this is unlikely to happen with BBOD um, so that it will then be more stable and risk-free for our clients? The honest answer is the problem is probably not in the matching engine. It's mm. with all of the control systems that they've built around it. When you build systems in the regulated markets, the majority of the problem is how you prove that your systems are robust, that they scale, that if there's a problem you can fail over seamlessly and make mm. sure you maintain the integrity of the market. So it's not just about having a good high speed matching engine, it's about having the right processes and tools in place that are monitoring what's happening on that matching engine. So mm. that if there is a problem or if there is a mismatch, you can quickly identify it, the alerts go off, you can step in or the system ideally We'll be able to understand what's happening and shut down a particular um, erroneous part um, but you're making sure that you've got the right control systems that can monitor these things because we're dealing with such a large number of mm. messages it's very hard to see you know the suspect yeah. line when you're looking at millions of lines in a log file and as part of our systems we've got that infrastructure around it mm. The other part is probably just good practice, you know, making sure you test thoroughly. You know, over the last year, we've been testing day and night with BBOD, their teams and ours. We run on lots of different test servers. We have a lot of automated um, systems that, again, leverage open source technologies that whenever we change a line of code and check it in, the system automatically rebuilds the system and reruns all the regression tests. Mm. So if ever we do something that would harm the system or cause a, mm. a potential failure, the system should identify it early. We use test systems that ideally mimic what the live systems are doing. So we try to use the same type of message flows, the, the same type of blend of orders to trades, so that we try and preempt the problems that you might get in live. If you don't do that, then your danger of course is that when that then happens in production, you've not yet tested it and mm -hmm. your systems don't know how to react. Okay, yes, that, that's really good for our clients again to understand that you're running many tests and that you're going to be providing us something that's really reliable and that they don't have to worry when they're trading on our exchange. So yeah, that was really good. Um, that was our final question, but yeah, it was great to talk to you today, Tony. And yeah, thank you very much.